guys, my name is Layla Sophia. I am an artist and fine jewelry designer. If you like contemporary fine jewelry, if you like luxury handbags, all things interiors, and I have some fun videos for you. I cannot wait to talk about today's subject, as you guys can see from the title. We're doing all things Scaparelli, Schiaparelli, Chaparelli, However we say it, I'm gonna say Scaparelli. If you guys are new here, thank you so, so much for joining. I can't wait to see you in all of my future videos, so make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Layla Sophia Jewelry. Let's start off with this incredible, incredible house. As you guys can tell, I am clearly a huge fan. I just think that Scaparelli, has done such an amazing job kind of resurrecting themselves. Daniel Rosebury is truly genius and American from Texas. He, I think, has encompassed what Elsa Scaparelli really, really started her era. I think he's done an amazing job of reinterpreting that and putting it into a modern setting. I feel <laughs> like Scaparelli is just kind of the perfect thing for us to discuss on my channel. As you guys know, I'm a fine jewelry designer and luxury handbags are my thing. I'm so, so excited to go over some of my favorite pieces. Of course, we're gonna be going over some of my favorite bags maybe some items that are on my wish list, and I can't wait to hear all of your thoughts. So, you know, we're positive on this channel, so I'm not gonna be going over any of the negative comments about the most recent couture show with the animal heads. I thought it was amazing. If you were offended by it, I understand that, but I urge everybody to kind of look at Scaparelli and especially Daniel Rosebury's work. From an artistic perspective, it is true artistic expressionism, I think, at its finest. To go over a little history first, Elsa Scaparelli can truly be considered a surrealist artist. I studied music and art, and surrealism is such an interesting, very, very interesting subject. Personally, I'm actually not the biggest fan of surrealist 2D work, so paintings and drawings. However, I'm a huge fan of surrealist sculptures, obviously, as we can see by my love of Scaparelli, and I am a weird, artsy, nerd, huge fan of, of surrealist um, movies and kind of art films. She could be a bit of a weird Criterion Channel watcher. If you guys need any recommendations, I have some really, really cool ones. There are a couple Japanese films, there are a couple kind of older movies that I think do surrealism so, so well. Painters, examples of more 2D artists that are surrealist, of course, are Salvador Dali and Picasso had some surrealist kind of stages in his artwork. Again, it's very, very subjective and Elsa Scaparelli, I think, did it in such a beautiful way and the way that it's being done, especially now, really in a sculptural way. Clothing I deem as more sculptural, especially the fact that they've kind of put on these jewel articles onto bags and pieces of clothing. That to me is pure sculpture at its finest. Making this category wearable just as the cherry on top. Artsy rambling, I know, <laughs> but the last couture show, I thought it was brilliant. It was really interesting. Daniel Rosebury explained that he kind of drew a lot of inspiration by Dante's epic poem. So there were the three animals that Dante experiences in this poem. Of course, I just have to talk about the gold kind of bejeweled details that he has been implementing, not only in the bags, but in the shoes and in the clothing. I particularly happened to love the oyster details, especially on the collar. I thought that that was absolutely beautiful. In the jewelry world, there are some jewelry designers who have kind of played with 
casting natural objects and then turning them into jewelry. My favorite jewelry designer, as you guys know, one of my top three, Alice Wace. She, I follow, I've been following her for a long time. I'm a huge, huge fan. Some of her early, early works were casting natural objects and making them into jewelry. I think that this is not only brilliant, but it's beautiful, it's meaningful, it's kind of referential, it could strike up a memory. And for Daniel Rosebery to use that within clothing, I think is truly beautiful. Let's get into some of the fun <laughs> bags and shoes. We'll do shoes quickly because, you know, I wouldn't, I sadly don't have anywhere to go where I'm gonna need these fabulous shoes for, and maybe some of you guys will, so we'll touch on it quickly. But of course, the kind of toe imprinted heels, I think is so, so cool. If I had some kind of crazy gala to go to one day, those would be like top two on my list. And then quickly, jewelry, of course. Now, I'm just gonna be very, very honest. Of course, I do wear <laughs> primarily my own pieces. If you guys haven't seen my jewelry wish list, that goes over some of my very, very favorite jewelry designers and the pieces that I would literally love to have in my collection. And you'll notice that there is no costume jewelry. As of right now, I think, I know that Scaparelli is only costume jewelry. I am not a huge fan. There's sustainability aspects to it that I don't like. I'm also allergic to anything that's not gold. It's a tricky thing because it really does just become an occasion wear piece if it's not going to be solid metal, yada, yada, yada. You can hear my whole jewelry designer spiel in another video, but for Scaparelli, I could potentially make an exception here or there. One of my exceptions that I own, I have a vintage Donna Karen piece from my aunt. She gave it to me before she passed away. That is my only piece of costume jewelry that I will cherish and wear forever, obviously for major sentimental reasons. If I were to choose one piece from the Scaparelli jewelry collection, I actually it might be surprising, but I love the earrings and I am not an earring girl. I've gone over this. I just wear my ear cuffs every day. The face earrings, I think are sublime. They are like, again, it's truly you're wearing art and I think that all jewelry is like that, but it's more obvious, it's more pronounced, it's more substantial. The ones with kind of just an eyes, nose, and a mouth. I also do love the lip studs. I talked about that in my Valentine's Day video. A pair of Scaparelli earrings I think would be just beyond iconic to have in my collection one day. Let's get into what we've all been waiting for, shall we? The bags, are we dying? These, ah, oh, these bags. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Daniel Rosemary because what? Like, I had no idea <laughs> that I would have like five on my wish list. I am thinking, that I know which one will be my 30th birthday present. Again, she's a planner, she's OCD, you know, I, I like to plan these things out. I'm also working very, very hard to be as sustainable, keep my capsule collection as edited as possible, so I wanna make sure that I don't get anything that overlaps. I think that the cream color face bag will be perhaps my 30th birthday present. It is, I mean, what? Like, it's so beautiful. And I've tried one on. If you're in New York City, go to Bergdorf. Rally entire viewing room and shopping room is so, so beautiful. I'm so excited they have it there. There also is a newly released, we're going to be newly released, half version. It's called the mini face bag. So it is a little bit smaller but it's basically cut in half, whereas the original face bag has two pockets with a zipper in between. The mini one, I said this already, but I loved the gold one that Amina Mwadi wore to the Couture show. It's literally just cut in half, so it's one pocket, it looks like. Not sure if there's a zip or not. I'm not sure if that one comes with a strap or not, so that would be a big game changer if it doesn't. 
then I would go for the big one. If it does, however, the gold I think is really cool. They now have extended the sizes of the bijou bag and of the kind of lock bag. So there's a, I'm not sure what the names are exactly, it might be medium, small, mini, but there's a larger. There's a bigger, pretty, like, pretty substantial, larger size of the bijou bag. Then there's kind of an everyday size. And now there's a mini. It's so cute. The cream or the black of the mini would probably be my second choice. The everyday one would also be amazing, but it's definitely getting into kind of like top handle, my Hermes Kelly or a Celine 16 category then, which I'm looking for. That would be, I don't know, it would probably be more functional than the face bag. However, do I want a bag that I'm gonna reach for every day? Or do I want something that's like, oh my God, she's taking out the Scaparelli tonight. I'm not sure, it's kind of, it's difficult also at that price point, you might want something that you're gonna use all the time. Then we got the gift of the Fall Winter 23 ready to wear collection, which I was not expecting. If you are on TikTok, follow Newsfash. I've talked about her already and she is my favorite, 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 hands down fashion commentator. She's gone over every single show she gives incredible perspective on all of these runway shows. She's incredible. And so she goes over in depth the newest show, which I thought was brilliant because again, it's like, how is Scaparelli gonna do like day wear or evening wear and not something that you're gonna wear to a ball? I actually think it was done really well. And I personally, if I was, someone who could fit into one of those pieces, I honestly might consider getting a ready-to-wear piece. And in this show, we got the gift of exotic bags. <laughs> I, if I had however much this is gonna be, the lizard face bag in this like deep oxblood maroon cherry brown color. Are you guys kidding me? I have a weird, soft spot for oxblood, maroons, the face bag and lizard, like <sighs> to whoever ends up buying these pieces that I'm sure they won't make many of, I envy you. Also a green crocodile, <laughs> like you guys. That like, you know how people ask if you had a billion dollars, what would you do? I would buy an apartment and that bag. It's gorgeous. Could you imagine just casually going to lunch with your crocodile scaparelli face bag? Like, yes. The secret bag is also such a cool, if you don't wanna get an Hermes Kelly, if you're over it, if you have a collection, if you're not really looking for kind of the main couple top handle bags, especially the ones that I've talked about, Celine 16, the Rose Sophia, any of those, the secret bag is such a cool option. Actually, my favorite, randomly, might be the one that they just released, which is almost like an old Celine style. It is leather just around the border and then a canvas, I assume, on the inside that makes it like, you wouldn't expect it to be a casual version of a Scaparelli bag. That's a really cool option. Also randomly, the nose bags, like, so cute. They're so, so cute. <laughs> Again, seems like if you already have Celine Triumphs and whatnot, that, like, who knows? That's just, who, oh my gosh, who knows? The nose bag could be a whimsical, yet elegant, randomly cool choice. And of course, if you aren't looking for a bag in that kind of statement level, maybe it's too surrealist for you, maybe it's too literal for you, maybe it's too kind of gold heavy for you, the accessories, you guys. There's a striped, like very Beetlejuice looking one with black and white python because why not the wallets would be something really really fun to own one day i can't wait to hear all of your thoughts i am such a huge fan i know it's a very acquired taste so i totally it's it's a deviation from the quiet luxury minimal usual 
aesthetic of my channel, of my life, honestly, of my collection, but in a really, really fun way. I am so excited to see you guys in my next video. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel, like this video, and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Layla Sophia Jewelry. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye, guys.